Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calderness. This episode, we're going to be chatting the top 10 favorite Hero Clicks of 2023, as well as answering some listener questions. This is episode 495. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. It's over, Simeon. I have the high ground. Instant dead and humor. Over how they, six how they people humor. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Absolute fools. Simeon will be able to edit that out, I'm sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make Hero Clicks like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day including all the latest Hero Click singles and sealed products, make sure you check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Use code DIAL5. Wow, I almost got them mixed up there. DIAL5, 5% off Cool Stuff Inc. order, D-I-A-L-5. And if you want to go ahead and get Hero Clicks, ooh, ah, straight from the source, you can use code DIALH10 for 10% off your shop.wizkids order. They still got a couple of holiday deals. They have their Merry Bricksmiths event or sale going on right now i want to say they've sold out of wheels of vengeance and that got you a 60 which is like wow what a deal but i think if you buy notorious that gets you no that got you beyond amazing yeah wheels got you beyond amazing and then a 60 got you avengers forever and then whatever this one is gets you batman batman team up notorious gets you batman team up it's pretty cool anyways joining me always in the studio is simeon bruce what's going on simeon Ooh, you know just hanging out Hanging out, just chilling. Right on. Yeah, I love it. I love the chilling. Big fan of the chilling. What made you happy this week, my man? Uh, what made me happy this week was uh, we had we had a real warm day the other day. I think it was Thursday. Hit like sixties, and uh, now today oh, I think it's like thirty some mile an hour wind with snow flurries. So, but uh, I'm not working today, so you know, I got to work in the nice weather, and now. I get to watch as other people work in the bad weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. Take that, other go. people. Um, no, uh, yeah, that's that's partially what made me happy. But uh, what really made me happy was uh, seeing the posts from the Singapore Nationals. They've got yeah, that was impressive. a wicked cool setup and tons of cool prizing. It really makes me want to go one of these times. Ty- like, I don't know what exactly like the limitations of getting there and uh, participating would be. Obviously, I don't speak any language other than uh, hero clicks, so I think that's one of the big barriers. But uh, no, it, it's just a really cool setup. And I was looking at some of the teams; they like they bring some heat. Obviously, it's a nationals, but like I was like, man, got some nasty stuff on the boards there. Was it pretty? Was it pretty? Uh, pretty stout field over there. I can't tell how many participants there were, but um, yeah, there's. I mean, there's a a Pegasus Cap. There's an EarthX Daredevil. I'm assuming oh, okay. with a legacy card. Uh, but yeah, two legacy figures on this team with Jennifer Kale and EarthX Daredevil. I shouldn't call him that. I guess he's definitely uh, not Guardian Daredevil. Yeah, is what I should say uh, from cap. the EarthX set. But he's as Guardian Daredevil now. Uh, so he themes with that cap. In that respect, so that's cool. That is um, true. Oh wow, weird. <laughs> yeah, it looks like this team is Jennifer Kale, Daredevil, Blackheart, then the uh, King of Hell Johnny, Super Rare, Headless Horseman, Super Rare, Space Ghost, and I can't tell. I think Caps on the other team. Okay. So it's a very or no Space Ghost is on. I don't know. I'm trying to determine just based off of tokens alone, and it's it's hard. Oh, that's fair. Because it's like mid battle; they're, they're all all over the place. But yeah, um, another team I think has the Snap and Thanos. I can't tell, but it's a unique Thanos. Cool. And I Snap and Thanos. Okay, yeah, it's got a little uh, the Snap effect. Got like He's the reaching Kazar. up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure because they haven't done that specific sculpt. Other than the Iconics that's in Modern, I can't think of. They have, like, Venom Thanos and stuff like that. But, yeah, they also pretty good prizing. Uh, looks like a couple people walked away with a Venom God of Symbiotes, a Thor Gwen, and then one of each Gingerbread Man. So, pretty cool there. But looks like a ton of fun. They had some really cool displays. I don't know if they got to show off anything new, but there's definitely some interesting props and stuff going on and some cool backdrops. So 
Heck yeah. I kind of, I dig that. It looks pretty fun. Yeah. After you like sent that picture, I was like, dang. Okay. Nice little area. I like all the backdrops. Like you said, I like the, like the covers and before everything, all the walls. It's pretty dope. Uh, what made me happy this week? I got sick, which is a, a blessing and a curse. Like the first two, three days were absolutely horrible. Um, but it gave me basically like a five day weekend where I became one with my computer, which is play like almost nonstop video games <laughs> every single day, which is uh, which is it is what it oh, is. No. Did you did you catch the BG three? Uh, I did not catch that. No, I did oh, not catch okay. the BG three. Um, I haven't. A, a I haven't taken that plunge. Around. Yeah, I, it's getting a lot of people. Ian's been sick with BG3 for two, three months now, it's I think. A long it's, recovery period, yeah. It's a long, yeah, it really takes you out, it out of you. It's it's tough. I know our, um, our friend to the north, uh, Jay Solomon, also has been... Uh, has he really come down yeah, with that? He had, to, he had to quarantine himself because of the BG3. That is tough. That's I hate to see that happen to such a, a nice, lovable guy in the Hero Hooks community. That's tough. That is tough. Um, and I know a lot of people at my old venue, a lot of the younger kids, too, have come down with BG3 up at Rainbow, which is really scary to hear it going around. But, no, I'm, I'm safe from it. I'm safe from it, thank goodness. Um, and uh, I, I mostly played – I played a ton of Shotgun King. That was my – oh, it's it's 11 o'clock. Well, I better start playing video games. Uh, you know, when you're sick, like, time loses all meaning. Started playing that, and then, like, oh, some friends are on? All right. Then we played a lot of the new, like, TF2 uh, Smismas update. That's their their winter holiday update is Smismas. Uh, they actually added some, like, dope cosmetics, and the one map they did a complete reskin of to make it more holiday-themed. Um, I think it's Nucleus, I want to say, is the original map. But this is Galleria. And they just turned it into, like, a pretty standard mall. What you would think of, like, the picture-perfect 1980s-type big mall, you know? And it's awesome. Holy smokes, is it awesome. The Red Team's spawn area, and I won't geek out too much on this. The Red Team's spawn area is a pawn and jewelry store with all these just random knickknacks all over the place. It's really cool. But the blue side... The blue side is a blue jeans store, Simeon. It's hilarious. There's just blue jeans uh, yes. everywhere. Uh, and as an avid blue jeans wearer, I was like, wow, I feel yeah. represented finally. Denim um, company. It's so, to be it's fair, so funny. For people that aren't in the Midwest, uh, I don't know how far out the buckle reaches now. Uh, buckle actually started in Kearney, Nebraska. So, um Really, but uh, yeah, it used to be the brass buckle. Little oh, interesting history note. I took a okay. tour of their factory one time, but the the buckle at one point was very much like you walked in and it was like denim as far as the eye could see, and then there was like shirts eventually. Okay, but it's definitely not changed now. Now it's like it, I wouldn't call it high fashion, but it's like overpriced fashion. It's like high Midwest fashion. Does that make sense? Okay, kind of sure. High Midwest fashion. I, yeah. I'm sure technically it is. What um, Midwesterners consider high fashion? Higher fashion. Yeah, without being too crazy. I, I think that's yeah. probably a thing. How would you dress up for the nicer Midwest events when, and whatnot? I don't say that disparagingly. I'm currently wearing fleece-lined work pants, so it's not like I'm at all trying warm. to be a fashionista. Gotta I, stay warm. Uh, yeah. I used to own but, a bunch um, of pair of pants, but I the, had to had to sell them to get a down payment for my car. So oh, <laughs> okay, okay, that's funny. Uh, but like the funniest thing about this map is like in TF2, there are always two calendars in the red side and the blue side that show you when the game takes place, and they're always like June 1968, right? Um, and then they have like pinup girls or whatever on the calendar. The blue jeans side of the map. The blue girl, instead of wearing her, like, bikini or whatever, is instead wearing overalls. And the fact that they went so far as to change the texture for the calendar and they made it December 1968 instead, I'm like, that is so funny. Uh, another great thing on this map is there's a movie theater part of it, and they have custom movie posters for every, like, for a ton of popular movies, mostly, like, 80s and 70s movies. Uh, they have, like, Weekend at Heavies, where the Heavy is, like, wearing sunglasses and kind of slumped over. 
They have Evil Red 2, which is an Evil Dead 2 reference, which is so great. They have Saws instead of Jaws. They have a ton, just like a ton of like custom movie posters. So like that has been an absolute joy to just go around that map and like check it out. And then I've been playing a little bit of Lethal Company. It is it is the cat's meow. Now everybody's buzzing about Lethal Company. It's a ton of fun. It's hard, uh, but it's a ton of fun. But yeah, playing video games, that's what made me happy. It's good stuff. It's good games to play. I'm really testing my gamer computer with a game from 2007 <laughs> and then lethal company which looks and plays like it came out in 2007 so yeah, yeah i remember really uh back when i the the saga around getting my computer in my desk and all that stuff uh that was two or three years ago now i think but what a good time i remember i, mean, I love uh, the desk updates though <laughs> finally getting my computer set up and i think the first like big game i was like i'm gonna test its capabilities i was like just racking my brain like what's a, a game with like you know high performance requirements uh because it always used to be crisis so like i at okay. first almost thought crisis and then i was like no it hasn't been crisis in like quite a while uh, so I thought, oh, you know what? A game that I could never get on my console because I had a PS3, Fallout 4. Okay. That's probably like a, a real big, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I download Fallout 4, and then as I'm waiting for it to download, install, and stuff, I'm like reading a little about it or whatever, and it's like five years old when I'm downloading it. And I was like, oh, oh that is no. so funny. This was like, in my mind, this was like the pinnacle of like what a big game big like, yeah cool graphics game would be and to be fair it still like holds up it's still a fun game it's just it's not testing anything <laughs> at that That's point fair, honestly yeah uh but let's go ahead and jump into the bulk of our show here we don't have any like crazy news not a ton is popping out right now but we do have a ton of end of the year uh polls and lists and all sorts of things so Another reminder for all of you at home, ladies and gentlemen, to vote in the Dial H for Hero Clicks. Clicksies Awards, they are in the description below, actually, of this podcast. As well as probably like every video going forward this month, there's going to be the Clicksies are going to be popping off. What can I say? But make sure you go and support us there. Vote for your top Hero Clicks of 2023. There's all sorts of different categories best set, you know, best iconics, uh, favorite overall figure, best sculpt, stuff like that. Uh, make sure to vote in everything. We currently have like 150 votes. I would really like to pump those numbers up, of course, mostly because I know, I know we can, guys. I believe in us. And I know that you guys will will shell out the votes and get it all ready. You know, I just know. I know. I believe. I believe in you guys. Yeah. But yeah. No so, voting twice, though. Yeah, no voting twice. No voting twice. It asks for your email. Don't don't try to, I don't know, use a bunch of emails or something insane. or so, I don't know. I don't know what you're trying to do. But yeah. Go check it out. Please go vote in the description below. But the one we're covering right now is one that has happened... Jeez, I don't know how long Hujibo's been at it. He says, do, 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 I don't know, probably 10 or something years. Okay, he's done this since 2015. I was close. Dang. Eight years. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good, Hujibo. So he has been doing a top 10 favorite hero clicks of 2023 for eight years now. So I'll just read his quick little blurb. So hello and welcome to this year's poll and community's favorite clicks of 2023. Vote for your top 10 favorite figures and or game elements of the year. I will take a detailed tally and report back to the top 10 vote getters just after the end of the year, like I've done since 2015. It doesn't matter if you've been a member here for 20 years or if this is your first post. Please cast your vote, and everyone is encouraged to join in. So the person that won, I don't know if you have already peaked this or not yet, Simeon, but do you know what won last year for? Uh, uh, I haven't read through this, but I do 20, have it open right now. 22, okay. Yeah, so last year's favorite as tabulated... From the votes of 134 players was Avengers Forever 045 Hulk. That is a uh, I would not have guessed that. I don't remember if I posted mine or if I know I sent mine in, but I don't remember if I actually posted mine. I'm gonna look through that old thread and see if I did end up commenting on it somewhere. 2022. I don't even remember what that Hulk did to be honest. That was Gamma Clap Hulk. Oh. That was that was the iconic okay. Gamma Clap Hulk. I get it. Sense. He yeah. kind of felt like a weird winner for last year. I definitely feel like Arachnite was like the figure of the year last year, which did win like our figure of the year and our voting. 
Um, but it was interesting to see that Hulk just maintained a lot of spots on everybody's list. This is like 200 point fanboy dial Hulk. But yeah, so that's what's won last year. And he goes in to say, so here's what's like legal this year uh, for sets and collections of so Batman team up, Spider-Man Beyond Amazing, Avengers 60th, Notorious, Wheels of Vengeance, all the Iconics, the DC and Marvel starters, and the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday calendar, as well as every con le you can think of that came out this year there were a lot that's like the scott porters cap on a pegasus you know batman merman rainbow superman uh thor gwen god of symbiotes watcher wonder woman all that stuff all the all that stuff yeah <laughs> there's a few op kits he goes on to say like the moon knight op kit the human torch op kit and the wakanda forever op kit which i have still yet to see in person I got to get my hands on that Captain America. I don't I don't know who's got it around here or what it's looking like, but apparently that's out. Apparently that's people are getting their hands on it. I don't know. But yeah. Man. My choices from 2022 are a whole lot of figures I didn't end up playing a lot of. Uh, oh really? <laughs> yeah. Do we want to look at our 2022 votes before we get into like our whatever's of this year? I mean, I I, I can go over mine real quick if you want. Sure. But, yeah. Uh so Starting at number ten, and to be fair, this was this did make quite a few teams that I played. Uh, it was the uh, uncommon Wanda Maximoff from Disney Plus. So that's the the big nineteen defense with the prob, and you can reroll, um, remove action tokens from friendly characters when you reroll an attack. Pretty cool little ability, and then she has, of course, like the spooktacular shape change and heals off mm. of. Uh, or heals one click when you hit shape change. Notably, it has like a stop click with no defense power, but you can heal off of it with that shape change. Uh, number nine was Miss Minutes, which I don't think we need to go into what she did. We've literally talked about her like 12 times that year. Uh, a lot. Uh, Sicarian Iron Man was number eight. I pulled one, and I, I never actually played it. So I, I think this is the one character I've never actually played. But uh, that's wild. Let's see what I said. I said probably the best and most accurate Iron Man we've ever gotten. I stand by that. Yeah, I, I agree think, with uh, that. I agree. With like that. if you sculpt swapped it, if you pretended like it was any other suit, I still think yeah, very accurate Iron Man. Um, number seven was the WizKids uh, convention exclusive or whatever exclusive John Cena. So the oh, old, uh, you can't see John Cena. Which was, I think, the the start of the meme, like the full on meme stuff. I think that was maybe the first one where they leaned super heavy into it. Yeah, that's probably that's pretty fair, honestly. Number six was the unique Kate Pride from X of Swords. Mm. Yeah. Each, oh, sure. This that's the, the mission point screaming, yeah. bystander one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I really wanted to play that on a Mission Point team, and I don't think I've ever played that figure to this day. Uh, and then there's Wrecker Prime at number five, which, again, oh. just absolute awesome like for Mission so Point cool. builds. Uh, I actually did play Wrecker Prime a few times, so I can at least hang my hat on that one. Uh, number four was one of the best... Fi uh, I'll read. Let's see what I said. This Beast is one of the best figures I pulled in 2022. He was the MVP for our tarot card clicks busters episode. Was mm. he? Oh yeah, that he was. was. The okay. Mystical beast. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, he tracked like went on like a murderous rampage on Calder's team, just charging down things. Uh so I actually did play that one quite a bit, and I notably pulled two of him, and I still have both. Uh number three, a figure I not only never played, don't own. So, uh, this is WizKids uh, convention exclusive Ares with a big old 13 attack top dial, 5 damage, 165 points. I never got this guy, but uh, let's see, the one clicks tragedy of the year ever was. I not anyone play him. Oh, I forgot 2022 had no DC set. Yeah, 2022 had no DC okay. set. Okay, so that's, that's why he made the list for sure, was because he was one of the few DC figures we got that year. Uh, number two was the, let's see, which part of, is this main set or is this, I think this is main set uh, Apocalypse. This is Apocalypse from X of Swords, but I don't know if it's Slop Apocalypse yeah, well, the, or. The stop clicks, the, the triple stop at the end. 
Because that'd be main set. Just triple stop. Uh, it's then... 038. Oh, that's probably... That's got to be the slop kit, then. Okay. Yeah, he's got sword bearer, leadership traded, invincible traded. Uh, immortality is a trait. Beginning of the game, when Apocalypse KOs an opposing character, give him a resurrection token, max three. Apocalypse would take damage you may remove. I think... Prob and shape change. I think this is the super rare from the slop, but I, I don't know. Um, if it's that one, then it makes sense because I probably pulled it right before I uh, I could have just read my comment. Yeah. Very nice. I, this is the one I pulled in the BR, and he just absolutely wrecked stuff. So, uh, And then my number one, I don't think <clears throat> I wouldn't have been able to guess this, so I know you wouldn't have been able to guess this, but my number one for 2022 was the L095 Doctor Doom. Good old Hooves Doom. Oh, really? Yeah, this was the... Oh. I'm pretty sure this is the Mosquito one. Yeah, the Mosquito one and mind-controlling microfiber tattoos. So when Doctor Doom oh. or Mosquito hits, you give each hit opposing character a tattoo token, and then you can keep racking up uh, tattoo tokens on opposing characters, and he gets to modify his attack plus X where X is equal to the tattoo tokens, and he modifies his defense plus X when being attacked by somebody with tattoo tokens. Uh, I played him quite a few times, but the problem is once he if he gets hit at all, if he takes any damage, he loses his move and attack. So he goes from running shot on click one to no move and attack the rest of his dial, and then his stats just get really wrecked if you don't get some of those tattoo tokens out quickly. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Man, right on. I will say this year was a lot harder to decide than it looks like 2022 was. 2022, it looks like I was just grabbing things that I, mean, I uh, pulled. I'm in the exact same boat as you. I'll I'll rattle off my 2022s, but overall, this year I had to I had to cut it down massively, and it like it felt bad deciding between this character or that character. It was like really yeah. tough. I think we were spoiled this oh. year compared to 2022. Oh, we absolutely were, like 100%. Like, so my top 10 and Empire was included in this uh, was like Jim Hammond, Human Torch from Empire. The number nine was Captain the 001 Captain America from Avengers Forever. My number eight is the John Cena, You Can't See Me. So I think we had like, we had two overlaps. We had John Cena and then my number seven is Wanda Maximoff. We were both like, yeah, these figures are fire. And they are, that Wanda Maximoff. Uh, Halloween Town Wanda is great. Uh, n my number six was the Captain America Empire Super Rare, purely the dial because I don't like swap and I don't like the trait, but like purely the dial still made it my number six, which is pretty cool. My number five was Chase Sam Wilson Cap, and then number four was Captain America Legacy. Honestly, I've played it so much more now this year than I have in the past. This might have to go up the like Captain America Empire Legacy card because it's so dope. Number three was Prime Wrecker. Prime Wrecker was a baller. Okay, we had like we had a lot of overlap last year, actually. Dang. Yeah. Uh, number two, Captain America. John Walker, Captain America, Disney Plus Rare. Yeah, I played the heck out of him. And then, yeah, number one is U.S. Agent Prime because he's just so dope. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, last year was, I think, pretty much. I knew Prime like, would have made my list last year than this year. Because, yeah, okay. that, Disney Plus had some amazing Primes. I don't know. Oh, why I didn't have, I don't know. I mean, I guess looking back, listening to your list and looking at mine, there actually was like quite a few figures that I had to leave off of 2022 that I sure. would have loved to put on there. But it is weird that I put something like Ares on there. I mean, obviously I wanted some DC, but a figure that I not only have never owned, but uh, never played, never, never even seen them. the sculpt in person. I put him on there before I put like the, that rare uh, John Walker Captain America. I played that oh, guy right. a lot more often than this Ares. Super fair. All right, we just want to go back and forth with our 10 through 1 lists or any honorable mentions you have before I do we jump have into our list. One honorable mention. Uh, that is, let me see where I have this list pulled up. Uh, my honorable mention is. The Meme Shaggy. So this is the Play at Home oh, kit. Yeah. Cosmic Energy uh, using 0.01% of his power, Shaggy. I think it's hilarious. I love that it got made. And even though I've mostly played against it, and it's not really like a 
hard to deal with piece. Just the yeah. fact that it exists is enough. That's fair. That's really fair. Uh, uh, I, I had a I handful. Also, the goons. All the goons didn't yeah. make the list, but super huge honorable mention. Uh, these are going to be crazy. I had like more honorable mentions than I had on my list, but like Sportsmaster, Aquaman, Legacy Atrocitus, Main Set, Matt Murdock, Daredevil, Spider Man Noir, Frogman, LMD Cap, Screaming Mimi, Ultron Legacy, Kite Man, uh, DC's Hawkman, Rawhide Kid, and Cap Wolf. Which some people are already like, whoa, those aren't on your top 10. I'm like, no, they're not, which is insane. I know. But uh, yeah, like such good figures this year. And I played a ton of Hero Clicks this year. And I I think it's a good sign when I've probably played more Hero Clicks this year than I have in past years. And I'm still just like, I got to play more of these figures, man. I got to freaking get out there and play them more because I, I freaking love a ton of stuff that came out this year. But, uh, Simi, you want us to hit us with your number 10? Yeah. My number 10, following the uh, same thread of uh, my shout-out, it's Chase Shaggy. So, oh, right on. Yeah, Chase Shaggy is one that I saw his dial, and I instantly was like, you know, the potential to make three attacks, the fact that he's just he's a 12 with precision strike. There's, like, so many things. He bursts through walls. So many things make me love the dial. I don't even care that, like, the source material is kind of like, should Shaggy be making three attacks? But it's like, I mean, yeah, it's cool that uh, we got this almost not normal IP. It's technically DC, but it's not like a normal DC IP that we got. It's cool that the whole mystery gang has, like, some punches to, like, throw, and I really liked the way that Shaggy's dial was made. I like that Shaggy, too, a lot. I've only played him, like, once. And I really want to, I want to play him more. I built like a ton of teams around him though. Like those yeah. chases are so fun. And especially, well, just, especially that Shaggy dude. He's just, just cheap enough blurry. where you're like, yeah, I can make this work. He's like a very good second string like attacker. Or at least he should be. Sometimes he doesn't work, but should be. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. My, my number 10 is 29B Prime Captain America. He's really close. He's really, really close to being like the perfect Captain America, but just my experiences playing him kept me from putting him any higher on the list. He more so felt like I can't not put him on the list. Um, I'm not in love with the sculpt. Not in love with the sculpt. I think it's really cool, dynamic pose, but he's just so hunched over. I like my Captain America standing tall. You know, you know, just looking, I don't know, looking like he's going to lead the Avengers. But this is a great, this is a great dynamic pose. One of the coolest, more dynamic poses I've ever had. Um, but he's he's really cool. He's great. Uh, I like the punch, throw shield. I like the no you move. It's an iconic line. It's an iconic, you know, thing in comics, the this stopping knockback and everything. That's all so dope. Um, the leadership willpower healing is, like, fine. But I have really enjoyed playing him. He's a great economic Captain America. I think if you only read like Avengers books where he's just kind of like, oh yeah, I guess he's the leader, he's there, then this is probably what you would think. This is your Captain America then as just a really good team player. Um, but for me, he just dies right away. Every single time in like every game, people kill him. And then I always picture Captain America. I think if it would have been on like the flip side, where if it would have been like running shot RCE, when he makes a ranged attack afterward, you can like place him and then make a close. Because that's cap. It's not run up, punch, and then throw shield. It's throw shield, catch it, punch to me. So it's almost the perfect Captain America. It's missing a couple of things, quite a lot of things, but he's a really, really fun piece to play and a really cool prime. So I got to give number 10 to the prime A60 cap. Yeah, fair enough. I think all those primes are really interesting takes. Cap for sure oh, yeah. feels the most like actual cap. Whereas like Thor, Thor probably feels the weirdest as like Thor is so Thor. weird. That is such a weird way to do Thor. It's like completely unique. It's wild. Yeah. Which I'm glad because like it's nice oh, to I have like different it. takes. But yeah, yeah sometimes absolutely. it is just like kind of wacky, wicky wacky. Uh, my number nine is probably a figure that I have put on the most teams this year. Not necessarily the figure I've played the most, but it's pretty close. And that is from the Avengers 60th. It's Ghost Dog Bats. Oh, okay. Right yeah. on. Bats is so cool. I, I'll i get to another character that 
just like teams up with bats perfectly later that's also on this list but there's like you could play scott porter or you could play bats and (laughs) there's a good argument for each one but bats is tiny he has enhancement and he gives adjacent friendly characters a plus one oh they have to share a keyword but still pretty cool dog super easy also i after reading uh the unleashed some of the unleashed series and i um i haven't caught up yet but i really like the uh, pet avengers i hope we get that full set we need d dog and we need a chewy that's on its like own base oh sure uh we did get a lockjaw that's on its own base so we got we got that we got throg we've had a lot of them but uh yeah we need to flesh out that unleashed series because it's pretty fun there you go my number nine is the Wheels of Vengeance Iron Fist. If you guys remember when he was previewed, when we talked about him on our set review, when I played him in Sealed, I was just raving about this Iron Fist the entire time. WizKids never really makes like a bad Iron Fist. There have been more Iron Fists made where you've been like, yeah, that's the iconic Iron Fist. And then a couple of years go by and you're like, now that's the iconic Iron Fist. And then once again, it's happened yet again where I'm just like... This is Iron Fist to me. This is like a great modernization of my favorites, Secret Invasion and Fear Itself. Um, and it's in the classic Iron Fist costume. That was the only bad thing about Fear Itself was that it was the white and gold, which is still a cool costume. But like seeing him in the yellow and green, the clear translucent fists that glow in the dark, the little special orange base, hitting the that deep like karate horse stance (laughs) looks awesome yeah Um, and then just the dial this is iron fist to me the only thing it's missing is like combat reflexes you could say close combat expert but i think he's not so much punching hard as he's punching smart uh which is what i'd like to see in a martial artist iron fist type and i just i love this dial i love it love it love it can't wait to play it in pull can't wait to play it just normally it's dope agreed yeah it's no shang chi but no, it's no. If it was, it would be in my but... top five, probably. Sure. Uh, my number eight, basically for sculpt alone, is Ghost Goblin. Uh, I think maybe one of my favorite sculpts. Oh, uh, it's definitely in like the top three of my favorite sculpts of this year, but maybe in like top ten of all time. Okay. I'd, I'd, I'd okay. really have to put pen to paper to actually say that it's top ten of all time, but. Uh, definitely from this year, it's hard to look at that and not think that it's just super cool. And, uh, the dial, not even like talking about like the swap stuff with the other, uh, masters of evil or multiversal masters of evil, just like the dial alone is like a dial that works really well. So it's got like running shot, energy explosion, uh, penetrating damage, poison, that kind of stuff. And oh, yeah. yeah, just it feels if I play this without any sideline stuff, it feels fine playing it casually. The team up card is really fun to play with uh, Sinister Syndicate, and yeah, I think the sculpt's just amazing. I think it's it might be the best set sculpt in that set. Um, I know a lot of people really like Dark Phoenix, and I agree. It's like Dark Phoenix is super cool looking too, but yeah, it, Ghost Goblin made my list just because of sculpt alone i would honestly say with how more so detailed like hers is like big and flowy with the fire and everything but his with all the little details and then still having those cool translucent effects i think he kind of i think he takes it he's more of like a stealth good sculpt than hers is like oh it's big and obvious and it's really pretty which it is really pretty and it really is really big Uh, but his is like dang once you really start looking at him you're like dude backpack full of like the a sack of skulls the really cool glider glider's massive the the green energy almost feels like it's dripping versus like propelling him it like it just looks so cool like if that had been glow in the dark man Ooh. oh yeah what a beautiful <laughs> can we get some like legacy glow hero glow is that possible? yeah paint <laughs> here's some paint whiz kids brand hero glow paint my number eight is a legacy card I yeah, I put legacy cards on the list literally just last year, so I'm allowing legacy cards because they are kind of like figures that come out this year in a way. Uh, but it's Avengers Prime. Avengers Prime is dope. It's been oh, one yeah. of my favorite figures for like a really long time. Being able to play it, this also kind of in a way sneaks Iron Man and Thor Prime onto the team because I only ever play it with them because that's so fun. Where it's like 
man, it really sucks that you made these great versions of the Avengers and we can't play them together because they're all primes. But Avengers Prime has literally built in. They come from outside the game. They're not on your sideline. So you get to bring in all the prime Avengers and you get to play them together that way, which is a ton of fun. The Avengers Prime card also has a ton of references to the theme song for the 2013 Earth's Mightiest Heroes Avengers TV show on Disney XD, which is dope uh, and a show that I really loved. So yeah, the Avengers Prime card easily like letting me play this amazing sculpt again in modern and one of my favorite pieces uh it's just so worth it it's so dope so i think it it pretty easily takes number eight spot very nice yeah i deeply regret not having picked one of those up when a bunch of people were speculating because now it'll probably be like another couple years man when that was happening i was like i'm so happy like i paid probably 50 40 bucks for it like almost right away when i started playing hero clicks i was like this exists i have to own it yeah you know it was like one of the first like two three years of me playing where i'm like oh wait huh this is a thing why don't i have it yet you know where i like kind of splurged on it and that's and chaos war right I'm so happy yeah dude chaos war yeah so i didn't play in any of that set but i collected a whole bunch of that set just because very iconic story well not really storyline but very iconic set and like storyline really based for set. hero clicks i would say yeah uh all the duo figs and stuff so yeah i i picked up the sentry void and like a bunch of other really cool chases from that set i just never found an avengers prime at a price where i was comfortable like sure. with it being so far removed from modern but yeah i'm still very happy that it's back in modern and that they made a very unique and useful uh legacy for it yeah. all right my number seven uh is what i was referring to earlier with bats it's the from avengers 60th it's the super air spider-man who mm, for is sure probably just one of the most i'm not gonna say iconic versions of spider-man uh it's the best like team up spider-man when you think of like spider-man teaming up with somebody uh, in the comic books you can play this guy at his top dial you can play him i wouldn't suggest it but you can play him at his mid dial or you can play him at his like bottom dial which is 25 points for probably one of like the best non-scott porter uh, combos that you can do in the game so having the spider-man team ability and team player means that he's extremely versatile and no matter what he's doing and then the fact that he gives friendly characters that have the Avengers keyword team player. And if they're not Avengers keyword, they have to be adjacent. Like it's just a great combo, but I love playing him with Avengers. I love giving bats the Spider-Man team ability. And then bats has a 50, 50 rollout. Um, honestly, that's probably his biggest use is just giving other Avengers Spider-Man team ability. Cause he has that on his dial so that he can give them team player and then they can copy Spider-Man it's pretty insane. Uh, I really like pulling him, or when I pulled him, I really like his top dial, his charge flurry plasticity, and then you can do one of three things. You can give him a mobile, you can give hit characters negative two attack. If you hit twice, you can do like two of these, give him an action token twice, or yeah, there's so many fun things, but oh, what's this terrible comment? Looking forward to playing oh, no. this starting line in the upcoming con le cap to give esd wow i don't think anyone likes this 45 point line i don't know why you would comment that whoever that is Interesting. but uh <laughs> yeah no uh, it's also a very cool sculpt the uh, as far as spider-man sculpts go uh, i don't know what this one's based on but it's like that arms back like mid kind of not really flight but fall that spider-man does quite often oh yeah he's kind of like float back trust fall type thing and he's about to like whip or whatever yeah uh my number seven is going to go to the absorbing man prime he's just so sick he's so cool as a big earth x fan that i am uh, i loved seeing him get brought into avengers 60 i also love that he was very very comic accurate like very comic accurate to the story where this isn't just him absorbing a city absorbing ultron or whatever Instead, this is like him after he's been split into pieces, and then the the cult of Creel tries to assemble him 
So it's this great storyline where Captain America is like racing against the clock, trying to uh, rally an army, trying to get artifacts for little baby Marvel, who is brought back to life, but he's just a little baby. Um, and they got to get him to the right place at the right time. While all along, while like the cult of Creel, they'll check in and they'll be like, dude, they almost got this dude assembled. If he comes back, because like this absorbing man killed basically majority of the Avengers at the time, killed Hawkeye, Wasp, Giant Man. Uh, whoever else, right? It's like this is like a terrifying version of Absorbing Man. So he feels powerful. He feels really cool. You can either play him sideline active, or you can just play him on your team if you want to just off rip start with him. He's got pretty cool pick of power. I love the randomness of his dial. I think that's hilarious and really fun. Um, I like him. I just like him a lot. He's a ton of fun to play. It's like, oh, I forgot that I don't have a prime on this team. Well, I might as well throw him on the sideline if I bring him in the game cool if i don't i don't i think it's a very like he's a piece that works i think casually and competitively where it's like yeah i might as well just have these kind of floating around you know if your opponent wants to throw them away or whatever they can they can move on them and get rid of him or if you want to try to get them together it's just like another little funny thing that like takes no time at all at being your turn okay two squares closer two squares closer two squares closer. like it's super fast super easy so and then he's just a ton of fun to play like just yeah Hats off, you know, standing ovation. Love this absorbing man. Hopefully this means we get more Earth X pieces in the future, or at least a little more steady trickle than we've been used to the last couple of years. But yeah, he's easily my number seven. Yeah, I haven't played him. I never pulled him, but I definitely agree that it's uh of the two absorbing mans from that set, there there's one that I would prefer to have. I think that's just true because it's a prime, but uh, the this one feels very unique, whereas the other one just feels more like a Crusher Creel. I still really like the Captain America and the Avengers Absorbing Man, though. It's like utility version of picking different terrains. Um, all right, my next number six is going to another legacy. Is this this is my first legacy card? So I am just super happy that this figures back in the game. It's Frogman. I <laughs> had a team back when there was knockback damage and then for a period of time there was no knockback damage uh it was a sad little era but knockback damage came back right at the right time because this frogman legacy is better than the original dare i say and the original was something that i quite literally one of the first times that i built a team with just a stupid amount of non-generics was this frogman uh the next time after that would be big tony cannon so okay yeah it was a good era in hero clicks history where you could just pick a stupidly cheap figure and spam it and have a lot of fun you can still do that but uh this frogman holds a special place in my heart for the uh, bouncy shenanigans that he does he's so cool like he almost made my list but i loved love playing frogman this year like Back and better than ever. Like, I mean, he really was. He was just so fun. My number six spot is going to the unique Peacemaker from Batman Team Up. First time we ever got Peacemaker kind of riding high off like the Suicide Squad movie, the Peacemaker TV show and all that. Really fun character and really cool representation of him. He is, I think he's like the only mission point piece I even put on my like top 10 list this year but he does it really cool he's like a support mission point piece so again it's really cool you can just put him on every mission point team um and it's like a really cool character and then if you just want to play him by himself with like no other mission points or anything i still think it's like a super fun 75 points feels like peacemaker he's run and gun and then he's getting close and stab you the prob is interesting i don't know if it feels like peacemaker chef prob but it does just make a piece straight up better. So it's, I like it, the idea of like a character that feels like they shouldn't have prob is then like taking a second shot or something. But it's also a cool reference where it's I do what you do, but better. Just a really cool, you know, it's got a movie reference in there. That's hilarious. So I love this version of Peacemaker. He's a ton of fun. And I'm glad we just got him in Hero Clicks finally. And I can't wait, obviously, for like the actual Peacemaker, like iconics we're going to get. But this, this guy right here is like a dope placeholder. And. He was also one of the figures that came out in Batman Team Up, where as soon as I saw it, I was like, this is awesome. This, like, freaking rocks. So, yeah, I'm big on this guy. Yeah. I think that was, from Batman Team Up, that was one of, like, the first figures that I uh, saw, like, previewed, where I was like, oh, gotta have that one. For many of the same reasons. Uh, my number five is 
the snap Thanos. So okay. I think it's going to be hard to, in the Iconics, I'm assuming they're going to make Iconics until they run out of ideas. I think it would be hard to make something more iconic than this Thanos. Like, just in the the idea and sculpt and everything, this is like such an iconic moment in comic history that the way this guy works, the way he feels, uh, the dial and the sculpt, it's all just super cool. The display yeah. box is awesome. So, yeah, he's he's my number five. I don't think he's as fun to play casually as I would hope. If it's a bigger game, I think he's fun. But if it's, you know, a 300-point game, he's taking up half your build, which he should. He's, you know, big I mean, yeah. universe snapping dude. Big boy fan of But uh, other than that, I, I really like what they did with him, and I don't know how they'll top as far as, like, iconic figures and iconic moments go. Uh, you know, like, Crisis on Infinite Earths comes to, like, mind, like the dead Supergirl that Superman's holding. But, like, I, I don't even think that tops this, really. I think this no. is, especially with, like, the MCU, like, the I would culmination say especially of the first movies. three acts of it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, definitely, like, the villain, the iconic moment of the past couple of years. Yeah. And it's such a fun sculpt. Oh, absolutely. My number five is the king of the vampires himself, uh, Dracula. He's pretty dope. He's pretty dang cool. I, I enjoyed him a lot playing him on this team. I When you see the different like connections and stuff you can do when it comes to team building, where off rip you read his like, oh, he can move two characters that have steel energy. That's pretty neat. Like the free half move thing. But then you can just give anyone the symbiote and just give them steel energy. It makes it really cool. So, like, that team was a ton of fun to play with him. It's it's pretty dang easy to get him healed up. I think he's probably a tough piece to play in sealed. And I do agree with a lot of people that he is a little overcosted. Like, don't get me wrong. But I think it's just pretty easy to get him to his, like, 10, 13, 20 defense, 5 damage click. And at which case, he is just an absolute beast to try to take out. Um, but he bites people, turns them into vampires. That's like really fun, really thematic. Um, I love that the the steel energy move thing, like I already said, you can build with it. But then it makes other older vampires better. We don't really have any vampires besides like him and just the generic vampire or whatever in modern right now. But he just works yeah. backwards. Like I love anything kind of like the Lantern Rings, anything that like then works back in a golden age and adds new playability to older figures is great. So just like how the Lantern Rings made every Lantern core a totally new and unique figure to play in Golden Age and a ton of fun, that's kind of what Dracula does with like all the old vampires and adding much needed mobility to a lot of those vampires top dial. So it's just a really fun piece. It's really cool. Like even the zombies didn't turn people into zombies. You know, but like Dracula's biting people and lets his vampires turn other people into vampires and that's like really funny, really thematic. Now that you just said that, last week we, we covered Mystical, and I talked about my build with uh, Wendigo, and it, it wasn't even a Mystical build that I played. Uh, yeah. the, the actual build that I talked about was, uh, but the one that I thought was Mystical that I took to the venue didn't end up being Mystical. Um, but I just realized you could do Monster and get, uh, with Dracula, you could get Wendigo a fifth movement. Oh, baby. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think about Very that true. just now. So, well, actually, maybe I did say that before, but no, I'm I'm just now contemplating how I haven't built that yet. And so, sure. uh, maybe I'll fit that onto like a team one of these days. Dang, that is pretty funny. All right. My, let's see, number four. This is the, the real next few are all going right to be here. iconics. So, Snap Thanos, I think the most iconic of the iconics. Uh, the most playable of the Iconics, I think, like, personally, I think it goes to this guy. I think uh, it's the one that I've been reaching for and building with the most, and that's Bane. I really like Bane's dial. I love the fact that he can share that massive top uh, attack value, that 13 attack with people. And then, of course, if he's there on his own, then he's a 14 for 5 with super strength. That Batman enemy 
the sculpt is amazing. Um, the venom injection, the way that they work that in, like this non-traditional kind of vampire dial, but not really like this really non-traditional dial. I can't remember who I was playing against, but I got him to click one and I think it was either that turn or the very next turn I had KO'd something. So like I had gotten rid of an overdose token and then I hit my willpower roll and he was on click one with no overdose tokens. And my opponent was just like, Oh no. And I was like, yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think this guy's awesome. I think the sculpt is once again, huge moment in comic book history very amazing to see like on dial on sculpt uh yeah if you weren't even gonna play the game just having like this sit somewhere on like a shelf or a desk is really cool but yeah i think it adds so much that he's a, an extremely playable piece and an extremely fun piece to play also like the fact that he's like his bottom dial is like this kind of manipulator like he's got tk and outwit and then he can yeah draw lines of fire from uh count range and like draw lines of fire from like across the map potentially so he's he doesn't have to activate right away but you have to be careful not to get hit before you activate it's very methodical bane and i really enjoy the way that they designed that dial that's legit he is really cool i honestly i think if i was a bigger bane fan or if i was just like not so picky about who to put on this list i think he is easily a top 10 figure you know top five figure of the year because that is like such an iconic version of bane and he is so fun to play and just everything you said you know i pretty much would echo like it's pretty awesome uh along the same vein my number four is doomsday i mean this is puts iconic in iconics man like I would say both this Doomsday, this Bane, like, but this Doomsday, man, just for me, as, like, someone who is a big fan of Superman villains and loves seeing them kill the big blue blunder, uh, this dude rocks. Like, this is the Doomsday to own. I've owned every single Doomsday. I, like, went back when I first started playing, bought all the Doomsdays. They were a little expensive to collect at a time, and then, you know, we got the convention-exclusive Doomsday, which absolutely pales in comparison like not even close so he's got the old school like bizarro dial he ramps up which is fair very accurate for doomsday but this one does it just so much better where it's like he's a beast he's gonna mess you up and then it still shows okay if you want to be really really comic accurate sure he's got a constraint token you know he can only do like one attack or whatever at a time he can't flurry or anything yet he's got one arm tied behind his back um but then if you're like okay i want to start dealing more than just one damage to you and you have to make that it's a tough decision to be like ah, just get rid of it so i can try to go through your dial and then he just wails on you this doomsday is awesome he's one of like the most fun pieces they've made i feel like ever and then it just it does what every new iteration iconic version of a piece you want to do where it's like every old version of that piece is like wow could never hope to live up to this one we finally like perfected doomsday and that's exactly how this one feels he is seriously insanely fun to play yeah I haven't played with him, but I've I've played against him, and it's actually like one of those things where you're just kind of terrified to activate him. You like don't know what to do with him a lot of the time. Although, like in the case of playing against him when Calder was in in control, uh, I just let you miss quite a bit. So. Yeah, yeah, he did miss. He missed a lot. That was yeah. tough. That was tough. But you know, that's yeah. the way it goes. I guess it's the way she rolls. Okay. All right, the last of my iconics. I oh, had man. to had to fit this one in there. It's uh, God. What do they call call this guy? Uh, Broken Hearts Wolverine something. Oh hearts. sure, I yeah. Can't remember. Uh, it's it's bedridden Wolverine. It's Wolverine that's stuck in a bed, and I don't know what my favorite part of this figure is. If it's the fact that when I play it, I'm scooting a bed around the map. Uh, it's either that or. It's the fact that it's, you know, based on, like, the, the meme that's been going around for, well, 10 years Forever. now. Yeah, <laughs> like, a quite time. a while. Uh, it's also something that we never got in the Dark Phoenix Saga set. So it's, like, one once again, it's, like, a nod to that uh, animated series that I think a lot of people grew up with, a lot of people enjoy. Um, and then it's also just one of the most unique takes on Wolverine. Like, yes, he still has Blaze Claw's fangs. But he's got an interesting way to like increase his role. Um, 
he has this whole like crush thing going on that most Wolverines don't have. I mean, I don't think any other Wolverine has. To be no, <laughs> no. Yeah. And I don't think any other Wolverine will get it after this, but it's just such a fun figure. And yeah, I think it comes in at a really economical, like 45 points. It's very interesting to try and build around and build with. So yeah, it's my number three. That's pretty legit. That's super fair. Who am I going to go with for number three, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, pretty easy. It's Iron Spider. I played the heck out of Iron Spider. He has one of the coolest <sighs> abilities they've ever had in modern, which is just giving everybody Sinister Syndicate team ability. And it led to a ton of shenanigans. I had this guy on my U.S. Nationals team. I was playing him a ton before that. I'm like, every state's tournament I was going to. Iron Spider Prime. Old Aaron Davis just knocks it out of the park. Uh, number one, he gives everybody safeguard out with that already had Sinister Syndicate team ability like on them. So he himself just has protect safeguard out with, which is so nice. Um, he has charge flurry plasticity stealth. This is all I got is like 30 point line is insane for three clicks. Like that's a special movement in the entire time. That's so dope. Uh, and then of course his special like leadership. So he's got shape change invulnerability for 30 points. It was so hard to take this guy out for the most part for a ton of people. Um, and then just if he succeeds at leadership and it's a normal leadership role, but then opposing characters can't use the effective equipment <laughs> like that's so dope that's within range not even line of fire uh, and he's just got like a decent five range like this iron spider also a great sculpt an incredible you know black and gold versus the red and gold version of that uh he's doing this really cool leap up he looks amazing he has a ton of he's a super fun dial where if you want to play him as a support piece that also hits so hard um or just like a main attacker for 75 points. He's a ton of fun and just such an awesome prime that was added to the game. And I built a ton of teams with this guy. So yeah, Iron Spider Prime, top three. Yeah, he, he definitely should have made my list because, yeah, I also heavily enjoyed playing with him. Um, gosh, I think the only thing that I put on this list from Beyond Amazing was Frogman. And I probably, I don't know, there was a ton of good stuff that came out this year, but yeah, that Iron Spider. I can't believe I didn't put him on my list because I also I maybe it's recency biased because uh, Notorious also gave us a way to like do the swapping attack powers. But no, uh, just giving everybody that ability and then having some insane stuff happen is so much fun. Having figures that shouldn't oh. have high attack values have high attack values is so much fun. All right, my number two. We finally got to him. Uh, Calder already said everything I need to say about him, but it's Dracula, I think. Right on. There's so many fun ways to build with him, and I love the Fear Itself look. I I hate the classic, like, count look for Dracula. I don't know why. I just think uh, he's so much more imposing with, like, the, the gray skin, the long white hair, and, like, the blood armor. Like, he's actually, like, a general leading his troops into battle instead of, like, this creepy guy just, like, sneaking around a castle kind of thing. Oh, but, sure, yeah. yeah. I this Dracula I don't know, I haven't played this against like the world or the Fear Itself, World's Finest, geez. The Fear Itself uh Dracula, but I honestly think that like they both have their merits. I just I like this guy's top dial a lot more. I like the way he brings in vampires and yeah, like you said, I think as like a uh backwards compatible figure, he helps out all those golden age vampires quite a bit. Absolutely man that's probably the only thing that i would say is lacking about dracula is the sculpt because the fear itself sculpt with the big old sword and everything is still just so dope and yeah. like just looks so great yeah versus this guy's kind of hitting a, he's gonna rip you apart with his hands more so than like a sword or anything but it's still so sick uh my number two is is the support of the year in my opinion it's saint walker kind of the same vein as iron spider he was on a ton of my teams i really enjoy building with him and he's just going to go on a lot of teams in the future so as just a solid lantern support hitting his lower like 30 point line the empower within range and line of fire giving the plus one attack being able to drop off constructs having both uh enhancement and perplex top dial or just enhancement like enhancement and power tk and he makes all of your rolls like slightly better crit hit chance where it's an 11 if he's at 30 or uh, it's uh, 60. If he's at 60, it rolls a 10 or more are critical hits. It's so fun. 
Uh, he is the he is the Blue Lantern goat, man. He's awesome. I love Saint Walker. He's been a ton of fun to play. He's still a ton of fun to play. And even if you play him at sixty, you want to do a little running shot. He's a little bit of an attacker more so than just support. Then he's even better. So he's a ton of fun. Got to go Saint Walker. Yeah, that's super mean, your numero uno. Oh, you never played him? Yeah, oh man, I never. Oh, well, I love playing these. Notoriously, I never. I never pulled a single oh. ring from Batman team up. So, that is so like, sad. All of the lanterns and their constructs have just evaded me. All I mean, sure, I could have traded or bought some stuff, but I just, I decided to be easier not to get any rings or constructs, sure. and just hold off for Dang. two years than to Dang. collect them all. I uh, dude. My number one is easily in my top five sculpts of all time. I know, like, that was my main reason for Ghost Goblin was the sculpts so amazing, and I. I definitely think Ghost Goblin is in the conversation top 10 of all time, but this guy is easily top five, if not okay. one of my favorite sculpts of all time. It's Wheels of Vengeance, 053, Namor, jumping Ooh. out of the water on the shark. I, I love the dial. I think it's rare that a chase is not so crazy that uh, um, you can actually play it casually and not feel bad. I think that's fairly rare. Uh, I can play this guy at his top dial, even, you know, put, like, Frenchie on him. I think he's got vehicle. Maybe not. No, he doesn't. Uh, <laughs> but you, I can play this guy at his top dial with his insane hypersonic and then uh, potential flurry as free. And I don't feel bad because I'm paying 145 points. I can play him at his lower dial, and he just, you know, he's not doing too much. He's just doing enough where it's really fun and it's really interesting. Okay. And... I think this slot should be shared with the Chase Wolverine, who also does a lot of really fun stuff, but I don't think is like quite good enough to be competitive. I think these they both have uh, really amazing dials. I just think this Namor has such an amazing sculpt. It's like older Namor. He's got Dolphin. He's got Flurry. Flurry has Free. He's got Hypersonic. He makes water. He does all the things that a Namor should do, and then he's on... One of my favorite sculpts of all time. So, yeah. The, the great white jumping out of the water with Namor latched onto it is just <laughs> such a sick image to even think about. Like, it's such a dope sculpt. Like, the Nick Fury Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Namor, where all he's doing is, like, diving, and it's, like, the fake. Like, that's the surface of the water. Sploosh. Yeah. Diving in and then going out. Like, that was such a great sculpt. But that then is this like one. A crazy, oh. unique sculpt. Yeah. I also love that instead of just making some sort of shark bystander generation they have like it built into his trait with like chomp it gives him flurry so not only is namor hitting you but then there's also this secondary attack coming from this shark attack, if you're yeah. in water terrain you know it's a pretty interesting way to yeah. do it and uh yeah i really like i do it. really i do really like that i do think like it's cool that, like camo and everybody like they make sharks but like him being like, the, oh yeah, I don't just make a shark bystander. It's it's me and the shark are whooping your butt, dude. Like that's cool. Also, the comic book that this is this Namor is from, I'm assuming, because it's one of the few where he's like old and has like the white hair. Um, it's a fun comic series. Oh, right on. It does. He does have future as a keyword, so I'm assuming that's the ah. one. But he doesn't have any like flavor text that makes me think it's that one. So I would say he is just like. I think it's a great choice for figure of the year. I think the sculpt is there. I think the dial is a ton of fun. I mean, yeah, it speaks to you as a fan, Namor, or just like of how cool he is. Then yeah, absolutely. My number one piece probably doesn't shock anybody at all. It's Captain America on the Pegasus. Such a just freaking cool piece. The like when Will uh, when War of the Realms came out, it was just Spider Man from that story. I was like, man, that was a really cool story. I would have really liked to get the rest of the team. And I don't know if this means we're going to get the rest of the team, but it makes me hopeful for it that we get, like, the Wolverine, Iron Fist, Power Man as well. Um, that'd be really cool. But if not, we at least got the leader of the expedition, which is Cap on Pegasus. He's a ton of fun. He's cool. He feels like Captain America on a flying horse. It's a ton of fun. Uh, we have, like, probably the best version of Yarnbjorn instead of just being, like, an extra crit chance. Um, it says can't use defense powers which is pretty fair for Yarnbjorn. that thing cuts through god armor um i also like a captain america they were giving him a lot of this like leadership willpower if he succeeds either one he heals people 
that's never made sense to me. I get why they add that, but like Cap's not like I'm such a good leader. Don't you feel better? And like, yeah, I do. I feel healthier. <laughs> and it's like that's not really how like you know. But like this one is kind of unique in a way where it's like okay once he hits he lets other people use it like use charge which is like oh okay well if he's going in if he's leading the charge then I'll, i'm gonna follow right with him so like that's been really cool and then the whole handing out the shield thing um i always liked captain america's that shared like their esd the like ironically the tab app one does it and then the captain america like or just the steve rogers i should say the colonel steve rogers from nick fury agents of shield shares esd uh, and this one does it in a kind of a cute way, because in the comics, Spider-Man's like, what are you doing? Are you giving me a shield? And he's like, they can be useful. So it's kind of cool that he's like handing out, kind of has that handing out equipment, and it still echoes how the Avengers in War Realms like shared standard powers to other Avengers, which is pretty cool. So fun dial. Again, the only bad thing about this guy is that like his 125 point line is four more clicks. And it's like, well, you might as well just play three of these dudes for 120 yeah. points and one at 125 um but he is still he's like a ton of fun honestly i i super enjoy playing him and it's a beautiful sculpt it's really cool i own too many of him and i just like seeing them up there on a pile on my shelf look at all their their wings spread out they're pretty fun the final peanut base and so i think it's a good way to to end an era of the peanuts with just a standout figure it's true yeah and that is our that is our top ten lists, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to go to the HC Realm Store, and I'm sure we'll have a link in the podcast description below, and you want to count off your top ten. Um, any final thoughts for anything else for like figures of the year? Were there any top ten lists in here that were pretty crazy? I saw a few all DC lists, which is really cool. Considering last year we had like almost no DC, this year we get two sets, so it's kind of fun seeing some all like DC lists. Yeah, I think that's uh, really neat. There's some like figures where I just like I'll see some on somebody's list and I like I completely forgot that was even a thing. Like um Superior Iron Man. It was a play at home like one of the play at home Iron Mans, or maybe it was an L E. Oh yeah. Remember. Yeah, and he I'm was like, in the play at home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's a very good Iron Man. I don't disagree with it, but of all the things that like happened this year that wouldn't have made my list. Um there's a lot of recency bias in it on there... my own end. There's and like, on other people's end, but uh, a lot of people forgetting like some of the staple things that came out of Batman team up, and so it's nice seeing people putting like Martian Manhunter, like the rare on there, because I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah, like he made a ton of teams like right after that set came out. Like I was building with that guy like crazy, and then yeah, there's some sets where it's half of the Wheels of Vengeance, which I'm not gonna fault you because it is amazing set for sculpts alone. So. Yeah, if you want half of your top ten to be Wheels of Vengeance, makes sense to me. Yeah, some people picking the motorcycle equipment itself. And then That's uh, pretty funny. a figure that I thought I would play a lot more that I ended up playing almost never was it's on quite a few people's list, and it's the uh, Beyond Amazing Dr. Octopus because the bystander generation and just like the way he works with the rally dice and those arms and everything, it's such a well-designed doc ock and i i think we talked fairly highly about how unique it was to like rather than giving him flurry or whatever to like make right. the bystanders that do their own attacks uh so we gave it quite a bit of credit when it came out but yeah i just never actually got around to playing it all that much so i'm glad to see that some people uh put it on like fairly high on their list um and then yeah i don't think it's any surprise that a lot of iconics made it yeah that just makes a lot of sense honestly just like scrolling through a lot of these lists i think you can kind of figure out like what are the overall like standout you know characters of the year there's a lot of cap wolves there's a ton of black suit spider-man prime mm. i think i just have too many bad memories with him than good memories to ever rank him high ever um but i think for spider-man fans they're like yeah this is peter parker in the black symbiote this dude's huge um, a lot of space ghost stuff like that. This year is just a year of like a lot of firsts and a lot of really, really standout characters. So it definitely makes me excited leading into the next year to see what they end up cooking so far with the next couple of sets. They all sound pretty interesting. So I'm really excited. But man, just crazy amount of stuff. I think this would be if I had to say like one thing for this year, it's you made the most 
pretty much I could say you made the most iconic versions of each character this year. I'm like, I think, oh yeah, Matt Aquaman, the Doc Ock, the black suit Spidey, the 044 rare Matt Murdock Daredevil, a lot of you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. These really be feel like the top kind of you know, designs. fanboy Spidey, yeah, exactly. They all feel like, man, this is like the perfect version of this character, like that Doomsday. A few. A, we had like almost 10 Captain Americas come out this year and only two somehow made it on my list because they, they're all really cool and really amazing. Like there's a ton of stuff. We got great blades. We got, you know, great versions of the the Black Lanterns alone. You know, crazy to not even mention that. But like I, you know, barely played with any of them. I'm not really Black Lantern guy, but still they're really cool. We get stuff like Space Ghost, Zodder, Sanon. It's just, it really does feel like a year of just very iconic versions of characters. I definitely think we got our iconic uh, Ghost Rider this year. Whether oh, you yeah. think it's the super rare or the play at home kit, I could honestly see you going either way. Cause like both are just such amazing encapsulating versions of Johnny. Like this year just feels like the, the iconic year, I guess it's kind of weird to say, but yeah, I feel like this is, this is kind of like the iconic year of just, we made the version of that character. And I think that was pretty much accomplished, you know. I think the only other thing I have to say about this uh, thread is there's a member named Exothermic. Exothermic. Okay. Um, no space or no no ghost dog on this list. I almost said whoa. Space dog. No ghost dog. No no uh, no bats. Interesting. Say it isn't so. That's insane. With the lack of bats on this. I I honestly would have said that that person would have had bats be super high up there yeah, on their list, almost especially like, for how excited they were. Almost like Scott uh, Porter took the spot that bats should have had. Ooh. Hmm. I don't know who this person is, but uh, even the dog. Guess out in maybe the cold. a friend request him on an old HC realms here because it's 2002 and you can still friend request people on forums. A friend request on HC realms is. Truly wild. Absolutely wild. It's funny. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go and uh, place your votes. It's super easy to do if you want to do the really cool thing. You can either just list them off like a lot of people do. If you want to do the cool thing where it shows the dial and the figure and the sculpt, you would just go to the unit section of HC Realms. And if you click on that figure in the top right corner, right next to that character's name, it'll be dial in brackets. You'll click that. There'll be inline dial. You'll copy and paste that into your little text box. And then it'll make like kind of showing off who you vote for a little bit easier. So, yeah, that is the top 10. Make sure to go comment on there. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Wrap the episode up. We got a couple of listener questions over here on Discord, which is where I'm going to go ahead and plug the Patreon. $5 a month, you can get access to our Discord, direct lines to Simeon, Ian, and I. Pretty crazy. Pretty cool. We hang out. We play games. Uh, a few nights ago, we found out the Discord has ripoff Catan, and we played that over Discord. Kind of funny. Didn't know that was a thing. Might do it more now. It's hilarious. It has, like, custom Catan maps. It's really funny. Um, but anyways, uh, if you join our Patreon, you also get access to early access to videos, behind the scenes access, things like pictures while we're filming, et cetera, et cetera. Videos that are only made for Patreon members that will be uploaded to the YouTube channel unlisted and that only you guys get a link to go see because you support us on Patreon. As well as other goodies like being entered to win monthly giveaways and, of course, get our super cool action tokens. We got a couple of questions. First up, Matt Reed asks... If you had to make a bet on a figure out of Notorious or Reels of Vengeance being on the winning build in Florida, who are you putting your money on? This is interesting to limit it to the most recent sets. Yeah, I I think the safest bet is like Jennifer Kale. If I had to say any figure from Wheels of Vengeance or Notorious being on the winning build in Florida, I think Jennifer Kale might be the safest. I don't are know. Are main force or... Uh, he just said on the winning build, so I guess you could say like Kafan yeah. if you want. That would that yeah. been my first guess, but yeah, okay. Jennifer's probably the easiest to slip into pretty much any team. Um, before Wheels, I probably would have said Necron, like anyone that's playing. Oh, sure. You don't even have to play like a Black Lantern heavy team, but you could just play Necron by himself and that's 40 points that can you know get boosted up to a top dial that's crazy right um yeah i don't i yeah, guess uh 
the, the Asgardian Daredevil, he might make it. That's a 10 points that you can put on pretty much anything. Yeah, that's pretty fair, too. It's pretty versatile. Yeah, I think that's I think that's honestly where it is. That's really tough. As far as who would be my notorious pick? Ugh. Maybe Black Lantern, Batman, but even then, that's like a, that's a team build. That's like a specific team. I hate to say yeah. something that's like a Catwoman was... or Batman or something like that. Yeah, Notorious feels like it was very um, new, new kind of like benchmarks of teams to build around or teams that you can right. build with. Whereas Versus feels like a, oh, a lot of stuff that, that you thing. can just throw in the existing teams. So. Uh, Goon, I could see Goon making a team. Maybe oh sure. Even like if a specific goon, I think Quardian Thunderer makes Maybe, quite a bit yeah. of sense. If you're not going to play a Scott Porter, you might play one of those, or you might play both. Who knows? Yeah. Next up, we have a question from Alex the Enchanter. This is quite. These next two questions, fair warning here, listener, are pretty in-depth, complicated questions. They're kind of interesting. So, Alex says, pretend if even for a moment. By the way, these the, both these questions are like nightmare scenario, <laughs> nightmare scenarios for me. They're terrifying. Yeah. Um, so Alex says, pretend if even for a moment that HeroClix could be played in real time. Assume that all game actions are taken are legal, but there are no turns, and the pace at which you are allowed to do them is solely based on how quickly you can physically perform the action, with a one second cooldown window between each action so you'd have to say perplex thousand and one okay perplex thousand and one right um yeah something like that uh no limit on actions per turn though uh but let's say you have to wait 10 seconds to clear so there's like a cooldown yeah yeah one second cooldown between actions and then if you want to clear a figure you just have to wait 10 seconds, I would assume, to clear your whole team for the clearing phase. Uh, he says, what strategies or figures could dominate in this reality? I would say, so here's the thing about it not being broken up into turns anymore. Once I use Perplex, is that done? Is that done for the rest of the game? I would say that. Or that are we saying after a the clearing? 10 second, yeah. The 10 second clearing is a reset? It'd be okay. so much stuff to keep track of. It'd be, insane. It'd be an insane amount of stuff to keep track of, yeah. Beginning of... Um, I think, I don't know about strategy, but I think figures that would dominate or figures that you'd have to keep an eye out. Because I have, believe it or not, I have played a game in this kind of format. Oh. It was like years RPG? and years or and years ago. Uh, so it was a version of chess called Kung Fu Chess. And it's still, you can still play it online. Um I was playing this back in like 2005 or six online, but yeah, each each piece can be moved at will. Like you just as fast as you can click and drag your pawns, they still have to follow all the same movement rules and everything. But then after you move them, it has like a timeout period where you know you've got like to wait five seconds before you can move it again. The best part about it is it'll show in real time like your opponent's rook like coming down like the lane about to take like your rook and you can dodge uh, oh pieces God. so like if you if you if your cooldown ends or if you see like their queen moving to a square and you're closer you can move like to an adjacent square so that your next cooldown will be before theirs and then you could take their queen it's a very stressful and kind of insane version of uh gameplay but yeah there's there's no turns chess which is like free online and then there's kung fu chess which is uh i don't know if it's the original that i used to play but that's what the original one was called and they're both essentially what this version is and if any of my experience in playing that has to like help or if any of that would help with uh this question i would say you want to be able to dodge and by being able to dodge, that means if your opponent is picking up a piece and moving it next to yours, you could, like, before they declare their action, move your piece back so they're no longer adjacent. So you would want um, potentially barrier pieces. You'd also need, like, a quick drop barrier, like a a four, yeah. a set of four that you can just, like, place down and they're already, you know, 
Uh, you'd want that. You'd want position, yeah. plasticity on when you're going offensive because you want your opponent to not be able to just move away from your attack. You'd want uh, ignores characters on a lot of your figures so that you can easily just okay. move away. Maybe some phasing, some uh, taxi stuff. I don't know. I, f- I predict a lot of slap fights would occur. <laughs> a lot of like hands going no, across. No, I want to. No, I want to move. Yeah, dude. Oh, be like judge. I, I was reaching for my piece, and he like reached further and blocked my hand, so I couldn't pick. Yeah, I don't know. They would have to speed up rolling somehow. Rolling would actually have to be one of those poggle things where it's that little clear plastic half moon sphere thing the push down button oh yeah like sorry or whatever like those that would actually have to be what dice are it's like okay what's the roll okay what's the roll like it'd have to be so fast um this i think yeah a lot of attacks 20 then or like yeah and roll 20 would make a lot more sense i think you'd also have to as the attacker you'd we have to switch how we do like shape change and super senses. Oh, oh my god! If I move Absolutely. a character up, and I'm not going to wait for my opponent who's also moving characters to roll. So I'm like, all right, I'm attacking. You know, this Spider-Man. Here's his shape change roll. Here's my attack roll. Here's his super sense roll. Like I'm going to roll all all. Of yeah, those. you would have to roll all of those. It wouldn't. Yeah. It's kind of awful. Yeah, this this sounds miserable. This again, and Alex, he says for the record, I'm very aware that this game would be awful. Um, could be a fun video game concept. There's so much going on in Hero Clicks too to like explain abilities. Like, okay, this is how I'm doing it, and it's like trying to do it so fast and trying to. Yeah, yeah. This actually again nightmare scenario number one in the books. Uh, but yeah, I do think something like what you said, Simeon, being able to. Oh okay, yeah, well, I'm on a barrier. Okay, well, I'm going to bury your uh, smoke cloud. And it's like, wow, geez, like dropping terrain and stuff would probably be like super good, super powerful in this like, yeah, I horrible think, universe. I think uh, <laughs> burying yourself in also like drop off teams, it'd be like this whole new uh, maker's market for like quick deploy hero clicks teams where like you preload your figures in this little tray, like pull a trigger and they all like drop onto the map and you're like, all right, I carry, here's the action for that. This person attacks, this person attacks, perplex you down, this person attacks, make a chainsaw, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know. It would be yeah, a lot dude. of just, like, oh. screaming at some point. But I do think I'm it'd be this. possible to try this. Hey, I'm doing, I'm doing this. Hey, hey, no, I'm doing, no, this is the action I am taking. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Move, I'm doing this. That sounds miserable. This sounds yeah. like talking over each other and trying to move pieces all, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, not a fan. Uh, not a fan. Nightmare scenario number two is presented by Luke. Luke. Luke here. Picture this: It's 2024. WizKids has decided to not release a single new figure. No sets. No starters. No iconics. Instead, they have started a monthly comp- competitive play league with whatever is enticing enough for you to play. M- money, perhaps. The catch is that you can only register one team for the entirety of the year. What is, if any at all, that is a competitive enough team that you think could genuinely and consistently play for a year without becoming absurdly bored with? Here's a second question, which we'll get to after we answer the first one. So Sumi and I have each built a team. Um, If you just take an account, so it's basically just saying, uh, build a team that's really meta viable right now that you basically wouldn't get tired of playing a year from now i think is basically kind of what the answer like the the question boils down to so we did just kind of build these pretty quick before the show so we pardon us if these aren't the world's most competitive meta teams uh in the universe mine is a pretty simple animal build so i just thought of like what are the first three figures that i would have to have on a team if i was going to be a competitive degenerate and had to have them in order to consistently try to do well in a tournament all year. And my brain went to 100 points of Scott Porter's and Masters of Evil. And then it was like, okay, well, then how do I hate myself less for playing Masters of Evil and Scott Porter? So we have both Scott Porter's. White shirt has the Sinestro Core ring. That could probably be changed if you actually min-max this team. And then we have Hound, because this is an animal team, and he's the only one with animal to try to get the Masters of Evil on there. The sideline is a little tough. So I only I have I have to have Absorbing Man on my build. 
because I just feel like that's really good and could be really fun each game. Uh, Black Skull, Ghost Goblin, Iron Inquisitor, King Killmonger. There is no Dark Phoenix on here because I don't have any Brutes on here. Maybe that would change, but I feel like King Killmonger, Iron Inquisitor are musts. And then I think Ghost Goblin's also a must. And then I just really do like Black Skull for him being a strong attacker. But I could see reasons to put anybody else on there. Uh, and then as far as like the bulk of the build goes, it's going to be Cap Wolf with Hell Cycle. And then the Hulk Avenger 60 pilot on him, the Legacy card. And then the rest of the team is double Captain America Phoenixes. One has Bucky's arm to be like a 13 for four. Uh, to hopefully one-shot a lot of figures. And four damage is kind of the magic number to one-shot a lot of people uh, or maybe get an Empower off or whatever. Then he'll be hitting a little bit more. And the other Captain America's got Skybreaker. Skybreaker's just a great equipment, I think, for Captain America because um, after he hits with an attack, maybe you go all the way out there with his hypersonic. You blades him. After resolutions, then you just get a range attack uh, to target the hit character again, which is good because Yarnbjorn can actually be used with range. It's not limited to range attacks. It's only limited to targeting one person at a time. So this gets Captain America a 11 for 3 off, uses blades 11 for whatever, and then another ranged attack off, shoot while adjacent, also ignoring your defense, I think is pretty good. Uh, come on, the Scott Porters, the double Pegasus Caps, Cap Wolf, and then Hound. I feel like this might be a good enough competitive team just off rip to build something. I honestly, obviously it does not have like, I don't even think it has full 16 square map reach. So like, that's a problem. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and then of course, it's not going to have full map reach on a larger map. So like that it is, it is very weak that way in like an alpha scenario. But I do think defensively, it's a pretty solid little, little defense team. I think, uh, between Scott Porter's giving out all the ESD, Iron Inquisitor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's my team. Um, what's, what'd you build, Simeon? What is your yeah. team for a year? I think, realistically, if it was, like, something that I, I would want to win the whole year, it would probably be, like, the double Scott Porter, Jennifer Kale defensive strategy. But the key operative thing that Luke said is that... Uh, without becoming absurdly bored and i would become absurdly bored with a like massive defensive strategy team just positioning barriering up like i could not do that for an entire year so i went with x-men it's probably the most degenerate build that i've put on oh, paper boy. in a while uh just oh, boy be <laughs> just because it starts off with uh the old genesis apoc as most X-Men teams do, because why, you know, why have actual traditional X-Men on the team when you can have, you know, other things? So, if you don't know by now, uh, the combination of APOC and Genesis, both at 35 plus 5 for the sword bearer traits, so you're either giving them Twilight Sword or, not Twilight, geez, Soul Sword. Okay. <laughs> Twilight Sword. Of Twilight course. is a sword, to be fair. I um, mean, it is. Yeah, you're either giving them, like, the uh, Soul Sword, maybe Warlock. There's a couple options, but either way, you're going with one of those. Uh, Apocalypse gives everyone with the Arako keyword, the X-Men keyword. Genesis gives everyone with the Warrior, uh, Brute, and Monster keyword uh, keywords get the Arako keyword. So, effectively, she makes Brute, Monster, Warriors... Arako and the Apocalypse makes Arako X Men. So that lets me add things like uh, this has been done before, but uh, lets me add things like the Dark Metal Wonder Woman, the convention exclusive. She gets added to this team because she has Warrior, so she becomes X Men. She has the whole uh, Queen of the Underworld trait where when a character would be KO'd, including Wonder Woman, you can instead turn them to their last non-KO click, then roll a d6, heal them equal to half the result, and that's once per game. So you get an essentially uh, living legend for free to somebody that wouldn't normally have that. To go along with that, she has a stop cool. with defend and super senses, Wonder Woman team ability, mystics, 19 defense on that last click with flurry, steel energy, 12 for 4. Kind of insane. Uh, so yeah. She fits on there. She's X-Men now. Uh, 
just because I'm already kind of sad with the, how this build's going. Uh, I'm going to talk about an actual X-Men character I put on this team. Uh, that's Wolverine. Uh, this is the chase from Wheels of Vengeance, uh, playing okay. him at 60 points. He's got that hypersonic, and then when he hits, uses hypersonic and hits, not only does the opposing character or the hit target uh, modify speed minus one, but they also can't use speed powers, which is insane. It's just super funny, especially in like the low speed values that we're already at. That means like if you're a seven speed charge, you'd normally be able to go four squares, but now you just right go one. But also you can't use charge. So like what are you even? You're probably just clearing next turn, or maybe taking a shot at somebody um he has the trait played with fire when wolverine moves after resolutions you can choose up to two non-debris terrain markers adjacent to any squares he moved through and place them adjacent to himself so this is great if you're playing with the larger elevated pieces or blocking like the funky shaped and sized squares uh, it can really let you deploy quite a bit of terrain around or move opposing terrain as well. And then uh, there's options for his sideline, but I think the one that I'd most likely go with is the Super Air Apocalypse from the uh, X of Swords slop kit. So that guy doesn't have a great last click that he comes out on, but he can give Wolverine uh, Steel Energy and Close Combat Expert, which is Okay. Pretty solid for the, like his whole dial. That means he's a 12 for 4 with blades and exploit on his top click, and then he doesn't ever go below an 11 on his dial or below 3 damage. And having multiple ways to heal up is pretty good for that specific Wolverine. Um, rounding out the team, because, uh, you know, why not? I don't have anything. I don't want to deal with, like, Outwit or... Uh, anything like that i do have leadership with wonder woman i have leadership with genesis and apocalypse so i've got three leaderships i really need an outwit or something interesting but what if i just play two peggy caps <laughs> why not there you go. <laughs> yeah there you go so, yeah uh, wolverine's got hypersonic they both have hypersonic i'm playing them both at 40 uh yeah you already talked about them so i don't really need to go over everything they do but mostly just getting through defenses boosting damage with empower so no matter who i'm attacking with first uh i'm probably dealing like four to five damage on my second like follow-up attack and one of the captain americas just because i thought it'd be funny i'm gonna equip him with bucky's arm i think that's yeah yeah right it's great so good yeah 12 for four uh and i mean not for nothing to steal or super senses on a six probably not gonna work Very true. But yeah it's at least something a little bit of longevity uh and finally rounding out the team because we're already here uh it's scott porter with a free blue lantern ring so yeah yeah this is not... white shirt pulse wave scott porter i really wanted to do the scott porter with shock gauntlets but the points just weren't there uh, oh, sure. I'd, I'd rather have Bucky's arm to make sure one of the caps hit than to have a pulse wave that does knockback, even though that's hilarious. Um, oh, wait. No, his pulse wave does do knockback, so never mind. That's right. He he does all the things. Uh, he gets the blue lantern ring for free because he has all keywords, even when he's not on the map. He gets to drop Yippee. constructs as a free action. Yeah. It's just so good. It's yep. just insanely broken. Yeah. The... Uh, Obviously, if you don't know what lantern rings do by now, I mean, this one gives him power. So I'm carrying this uh, Scott Porter up with one of the caps. I'm probably dropping a chainsaw. I'm chainsawing with flurry. The chainsaw itself could potentially be a four damage just because of the sheer number of characters that uh, have him power. But it also has blades. And then, uh, yeah, my caps can be, you know, at five damage, potentially. Wolverine, if he comes in late to the party, he can be at a six damage, which is pretty solid. Um, and then, yeah, the uh, Wolverine has the rollout from uh, Apocalypse, the sword rollout. And then he also will just, if he does use blades, is minimally four. So that's something. I don't know. Yeah. 
it's a, not a fun team, I don't think. But it no, I mean, could definitely not. win for a year, and I think I I wouldn't get bored with it super fast. That's fair. Yeah. I do right on. It'd be miserable playing any one team for a full year. That that does just sound so tough, man. Because you could, you could never just get yourself into a gimmick or something, right? That would be tough to be like. I wouldn't run a mission point team for an entire year. That sounds miserable. You know what I mean? Uh, like it would be tough to just play any one. I think I said like the worst team to play would just be Grand Prize Apoc at three hundred. Because like I couldn't imagine playing one figure for an entire year. And it's like all right, either. So there's so much running away. It just like ugh, it could be like pretty rough. Playing anything for one year is, is awful. Yeah. The second question Luke 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 had is <laughs> and why wasn't Space Ghost on both of your team builds? That's a good question. That is a good question. That is a great question, Luke. Space Ghost. <laughs> What's he do again? A ton and of all stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he's got like thirty powers on his last uh, two. Clicks, he can't you know? be. He can't be X Men. That's why he wasn't on mine. Ah, uh, he's no. not an animal. Uh, can't be on mine. He's not an animal. Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know. He actually. I mean, I still am surprised with how little he's utilized in modern right now. Uh, maybe that just shows like how good Scott Porter's are, or like how much the game has become like very min maxed. I think it could like very much be playing. Scott Porter taking... Because, like, you think about this dude. He does a ton yes. for 30 points. But he doesn't do what Scott Porter does for 30, for 25 points. You know what I mean? So, it's like, true. it's kind of tough where it's like, oh, yeah, Space Ghost is amazing. I mean, I remember when I first saw him, I was like, wow, all this for 30 points is awesome. But yeah. uh, Perplex, double perplex if he's got no actions. Yeah. Uh, if he targets a friendly character, that character gets safeguard opposing probs, so they just can't be probed. He has the ability to choose... Energy Explosion and Penetrating Psychic Blast or Energy Shield Deflection and Invuln or Force Blast as free you like, and you TK. like that Force Blast is free. That's pretty cool. Stealth, Super Senses, and Super One Strength his whole dial. He's an 11 for 4 for 30 points. Yeah. I honestly don't think I've even played mine yet, which is astounding. You know who he does theme with, though? Who is that? Celebrity Cosmic Police? Yeah, themes with uh, Scott Porter. Oh, Scott Porter. Of course. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. How did I not think of that? Oh, geez. Uh, Listener, I'm going to propose the same question to you. If you want to write us an email or send us a message on Facebook, you can send us an email at dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com. Send us your team for a year team for this horrible dystopian future that luke has painted for us in which case you only get to play one team for a year uh let us know what you would play i will say a figure that neither of us chose that i do think is probably maybe one of the safest bets to do is that super rare ghost rider to just always be like oh yeah i have my powers yeah i have my freaking powers i think that's a pretty dang don't care about uh, your outwit good piece to play honestly i do think that would be like a really 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 good one uh and then our last question is from tyler m here he said if heroclix released a set based on a comic artist who would you choose this one is really interesting this one is like in my opinion this is pretty tough so like first rip like recency bias there is one gal uh carmen i forget how to say her last name but she did the uh captain america and then captain america cold war stories this year and she had just love lovely art the entire time but then i started thinking about the question more so in the how would i want the sculpts to look and to me that was like oh then jack kirby because i would love a hyper stylized jack kirby hero click set like in the way that they did like m10 dc 10 anniversary if they did a gravity feed marvel dc jack kirby versions of each character oh my gosh take all my money please that would look so cool okay yeah so that would i think that's my top pick choice for artists would be like jack kirby just for the absolute stylization of it would be really fun to see in the world of hero clicks um what do you think simeon who what I mean, artist do you want to have a set for We've already seen sculpts in the style of it, but um, John Romita Sr., I think, is okay. like some of the most classic, iconic like designs. I mean, mostly Spider-Man, I think, is what most people think of from him. Uh, I don't mind Junior's work, but like some of it just does not hit. Me. I do. I, do. I mind Junior's work. I, okay. I'm sorry. I <laughs> It doesn't land. 
for me a lot of the time. I think the story and the tone has to be there. Yeah. I don't think it works for everything. I yeah, I, think I definitely it, think yeah. there's some solid misses in what sorry, it is a... sorry, John Romita Jr. fans. I can't draw any better. If that makes you if that makes anybody feel like how can this guy say anything? You're right. How can I say anything? Uh, I can't draw half as good. I'd but, really love yeah. a Sam Keith a Sam Keith hero click set. Uh I know I've talked about him on the podcast before, but that's the guy who makes like Wolverine and Hulk just like weird proportions and stuff. Mm, okay. Uh, it's very, you know, toss biology and any kind of like semblance of real life out and just go <laughs> with like, stuff that looks cool. Sure. So uh, type in, type in Sam Keith Ghost Rider. Okay. And you'll see I'll what I mean. I'll type in right now. Because there's like there's a iconic cover of Ghost Rider versus Cable or Ghost Rider and Cable team up or something like that, and you like hardly recognize either of the characters, but yeah. Uh, wow, you're right. What is this? Um, interesting. Yeah, just what is this? Uh, the style <laughs> is this Ghost Rider? Is that what Cable <laughs> looks looks like? Yeah, he's just got like a bedazzle arm. It's yeah, just, like, dude, shiny. that is that is funny. I yeah, that's hilarious. I don't even yeah. Huh. I love the fact that uh, in a lot of his illustrations, like the forearm is bigger than like the bicep and shoulder. The like the hand slash fists in a, a lot bit. of his pictures are like just so massive. Like I don't know if he finds it hard drawing fingers or like what it is, but he puts such large sizes to the hands that his hands yeah. usually are bigger than like the person's head, the person's like thighs, even like sometimes the proportions are just absolutely wacky. The, the ghost rider skull, I kind of dig. It's so angular and stylized. It's kind of interesting. It's like, that's not a human skull, but yeah. like, it's kind of interesting. I will say he really does think Cable is just a shiny guy, though. Man, even the way he <laughs> draws, like the Cable's just name in the beginning, and just like you really think Cable's real shiny, huh? Yeah. It's kinda fun. Sam Keith has done. Uh, I mean, obviously, like the most notable thing that he's done is the Max. That was like his standalone sure. um, thing. But his his times uh, where he takes over like Wolverine comics are hilarious to me. Like I oh, heavily sure. enjoy his artwork, but. It, if you at any point are like, I'd rather it look realistic, then you're not going to enjoy it. Oh. Unless you just you know, are Sorry. cool with somebody having fists the size of their own head or, uh, you know, biceps the size of like other humans in the same panel. <laughs> this uh, scrolling down and looking at his Ghost Rider and Doctor Strange is such a wild, like, p point of view angle looking at Ghost Rider, where he has, like, the skinniest arms in the world, but then these <laughs> massive hands. And then his boots are, his like, boots the size are of the rest so of his weird. body. So weird. So weird. Boots are huge. And then just little Doctor Strange off in the corner yeah. with his cape being... And then these shoulder pads are wild and... In just interesting interesting uh, okay maybe i do want this set this guy this is what we should have based all of wheels of vengeance off check of out his really. uh his venom as well that's like what a lot of people want for like an eddie brock venom is I just like this massive blob essentially venom okay gotta see it gotta see it oh yeah oh yeah. why is this every pose is like the same <laughs> yeah There's this just punched over round blob venom crouchy gooey interesting man. interesting i don't it's kind of weird it's kind of weird uh yeah. that's sam cool. keith uh wow. i i really Is enjoy his art dude did, he, did he like draw that like one uh indie comic with that like purple guy yeah that's the max Not the max okay then yeah. like this really reminds me of something okay sure yeah he fights like the little I don't remember what he calls them, but they're like little ink blots or something. Okay, sure. Yeah. Fair enough. It's a very strange comic book, and I'll say most of Sam Keith's writing is pretty strange, too. It's like not I bad. Agree. It's just, it's odd. 
and it doesn't like follow the normal kind of hero journey kind of stuff but his artwork is equally odd so it's (laughs) it's just like a a trip after a trip well (laughs) right on all right ladies and gentlemen that is the end of our podcast thank you so much for listening glad you're hanging out glad you're having a good time I got that's a all i've got for you calder oh do we have final questions it's, not, it's not a listener question no it's oh, okay. it's a question for me oh between oh alex's dystopia world and luke's dystopia world which would you rather live in Oh, man, I I heavily dislike both dystopia worlds. I think I think Alex's would make me quit playing Hero Clicks, though. I agree. I, I feel like I honestly would no longer be Hero Clicks. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I really. And that's not even like no offense, Alex, but that's just like that sounds horrible. You know, Luke's would I, probably I just... mean I'm only playing like once a month. Because it would get very old playing the Luke's, same thing. Luke's is tough. Luke's is uh yeah. Luke's is tuf tough. Uh, but I would still play Luke's. I would still play. Uh, I would still play in Luke's dystopian. If that is only saying like, that's at tournaments. If I can still play anything, let me double let me double check and go look at. What does he say? Okay. Da, 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 they have started monthly competitive play league whatever that is uh okay so maybe i i would take this in the i can still play normal hero clicks uh like if i want to play at my house with some buddies but then if it's like okay we go to the venue it's just back to the league like every venue has this like league thing where even if it's more than just like a tournament once a month it's like everything is this league all organized play it's just a league now um I would still rather live in that world as not fun as playing the exact same team when you go to a venue is. Yeah. If that means like the fundamental rules don't change and I can still play like normal hero clicks hanging out at home, whatever. Uh, both are terrifying, but I guess one nightmare is worse than the other. <laughs> the other. It's true. If you want to send us your nightmare situations, no. Oh boy. Uh, luckily, luckily Please do. We- do not live in a nightmare scenario where we either play Kung Fu no, we Hero don't. Clicks or... We live in the real world. <laughs> yeah. So much better. You know what's great about the real world? <laughs> We've got that? places like CoolStuffInc.com. That's right. You don't have to be stuck with the same team forever and ever. You can use code DIAL5 to save 5% off of Hero Clicks at CoolStuffInc.com. They've got the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. They even broke open some uh, Guardians holiday sets. So if you want to pick up, you know, just Nebula, you can do that. Oh, boy. If you want just Young Peter, just Old Peter, whichever, you can do that. I don't know why they did that, but you can use code DIAL5 and you can purchase right, those huh? when you when you do so. Uh, save 5% when you use that code. And then you can also go to shop.wizkids.com if you want to, I don't know, buy like the whole Guardians of the Galaxy holiday set. You can probably still get it before the holiday. I don't know. I can't guarantee that, but you might be able to if you order it today. And uh, when you order things from shop.wizkids.com, make sure to use code DIALH10 to save 10% off. It doesn't work for Iconics, for pre-orders, or specialty figures like Scott Porters. Mm. And like always, ladies and gentlemen, happy trails, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is... Hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> Not going there. That's how numbers work. Over oh, yeah. six Over people work. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada. Yeah. So we have to stop. Yeah. My bones are metal. Are you kidding? Wow, wow, wow. Well, throwing in the Merry Christmas this time. Yeah, I'm going to toss it in. Yeah, I'm going to toss it in there. going to uh-huh. toss it in there.